you doing? I'm Zane Lamprey. In this episode, I go three sheets to pull it. I drink vodka, a lot of vodka, and I go to a wedding. It's a good show. You'll like it. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. Warning! If you're in Poland and this guy starts pouring booze in a bowl, run away. Oh, okay. You'll see more of that later. What's, what's that thing for? But first, Poland. If you want to meet people who like to drink, come here. You're my best friend. You're my best friend in the whole world. They have stuff that's illegal back in the States. Obviously, it has the grass in it. Stuff that's very, very strong. <laughs> what happened? What just happened? And stuff that's downright wrong. Oh. But hey, somebody's got to drink it, and I'm just the guy for the job. When I go, three kids in I begin my Polish journey in the city of Krakow at a restaurant called Ogni Mimichum, which means fire and sword. The reason I'm here is to experience some traditional Polish food and drink with this guy, Pavo. He makes me something called Mia Dula. This is honey vodka, which is very popular here. It's an 80 proof blend of rye vodka, some secret herbs, and honey filtered and aged in oak barrels. What do you feel? It's like, um, I, I really like it. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like a scotch, but it just has a just a hint of sweetness to it. Yes, that's right. I thought it'd be sort of overbearing with the honey. I thought it'd be very sweet and sort of like a liqueur. Nothing like that. No, nothing like that at all. The other bottle is a more traditional version of so-called honey vodka, specifically produced for this restaurant. It's just honey and vodka. No herbs, no aging in barrels, no filtering, but 80 proof. It's, it's good. Nice, different. It's not syrupy like I maybe thought from the cloudiness of it. It tastes like vodka and honey, but neither one is sort of taking over the taste, you know? Yes, I know. They're both very mild. The, the vodka is mild, the honey's mild. Yeah. So, so it tastes like honey and vodka, but not, not as strong. Pavo says there are no rules for drinking this. You can have it before your meal, with your meal, after a meal, because, because it's like or a, all the above, like uh, what we're doing. Okay. It's a historic kind of, of restaurant. And also food is made according to old Polish recipes. There's pork ribs, chicken, ham, potatoes, cooked cabbage, and pickles. If you want to come here and eat all this amazing food, you should, and drink this, which I'm confident that you're gonna, you're gonna like it. In fact, I'm so confident that I'm prepared to offer you my official three sheets guarantee. If you don't like it, then I won't like you. That is my guarantee. My other guarantee is that this is just a warm up for things to come. Because after one last shot with Pavo. That over here. I hightail it over to Kazimir, Krakow's Jewish Quarter. So yes, good boy. Oh, settle down there, big boy. This is Dave, the bartender. And he tells me that this bar offers a sort of modern day twist to the ancient art of alchemy. And the name of this bar is the? Alchemia. Alch like alchemist. Yeah, like alchemist, yeah. Lead to gold. Yes. Like, yes. like you turn these these this into, 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 yeah. into cocktails. Yes. To gold, the gold standard. I don't know, I'm making well, it up. Make it. In keeping with the whole alchemy thing, Dave whips out a bottle of this. Look at all the gold. It's called Goldwasser, a root and herb-based 80-proof spirit. 
When it was developed in the Polish city of Danzig, back in the late 1500s, alchemists believed gold had medicinal qualities, hence all the gold flakes. So how does Dave serve it? Let's just say it delivers a punch to the lungs. Here it goes. First, he pokes a hole in a coaster and puts a straw through it. This Come is on, the first man. part of, of this installation. Then he lights a snifter of Goldwasser on fire and transfers it to another glass. Pretty cool looking. Notice he uses that coaster to trap the vapor in the snifter. Meanwhile, I blow out the flame and down the Goldwasser. <laughs> okay, and then take a deep breath. <laughs> Woo! What happened? What just happened? Dave tells me that by inhaling the alcohol vapor from the first snifter, I'm essentially getting more alcohol into my bloodstream <laughs> via my lungs. Cool. Don't try this at home. We don't. Uh, or at a bar. We don't uh, or anywhere give else our customers. Matter. Speaking of something you shouldn't do at home, how about something that's illegal back in the States? This is the bison grass vodka. Yeah. Obviously it has the, the um, grass in it. Hey, professor. What makes this stuff so interesting? Why, yes, Jane. Bison grass vodka is bison grass steeped in vodka. But here's the controversial part. This particular grass contains a chemical compound known as coumarin. In 1978, the FDA deemed it was a toxin, and it was outlawed as a food additive in the US. You can find modified versions of bison grass vodka in the States that meet with FDA regulations and taste very similar. As for the stuff you're about to drink, good luck, Zane, because the FDA wouldn't approve. <laughs> Yo. Okay, now you understand? You know everything you need to know about bison grass? Okay, okay, we can move on. So what we're moving on to here is a Polish martini, which starts with one part apple juice, one part bison grass vodka, one part honey liqueur. A little bit of vodka, one part of vodka. Shaken over ice. And poured into a chilled martini glass with a lemon twist. Mm. It's good. It's very good. It's not too sweet. Now the question, is it good enough to give me special powers? Is this a crystal ball? Yes, of course. Can I see the it's future crystal. in this? Oh, we are in Alchemy, so you can, of how course. Do, how do you turn it on? You must very slowly rub three times. One, three sheets. Two, three sheets. This is weird. <laughs> I see a Polish wedding in my future. What'd you do at your wedding? And as it turns out, seeing might be believing. I crashed a bachelor party. <laughs> okay, you might be wondering what's happening at this point. So here's the deal. After looking into my future, I hightailed it over to a bar called Pinkney Pius, where my visions appear to be coming true. You're getting married yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Now the question, can I butter them up for an invite to the wedding with a round of beers? Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations. The beer we're drinking is Teskia, a pale lager of around 5.6% alcohol, which has been brewed in Poland since 1629. It has a slightly more hoppy edge than most American lagers. You drink more at weddings, right, than you do at any other event. Yeah, that's true. In that case, I really got to get an invite. You can come in. I can come? Yeah, in my wedding. You must. Must? Now what? I have to you, come? You don't have no... Hey, are you saying that because you've been drinking or I can really come to your wedding? <laughs> no problem. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations. Cheers. See you guys tomorrow. See ya. Coming up, my journey to the wedding leads to a very strange encounter. Hey! Night time! Day two in Poland, and 
I'm leaving the city of Krakow on my way to a wedding out in the Polish countryside. But before that, I stop in the small town of Wisła to meet with a serious big shot in the Polish vodka scene. His name? Tad Dorda. His product? Chopin Vodka. But he's not here to sell his product. As a sort of vodka evangelist, he's here to dispute the prevailing world opinion that good vodka is an odorless, flavorless, neutral spirit that can be made from anything. And to prove his point, he's lined up some different samples of vodka distilled only once from four different sources. Rye, that's rye, barley, oats, and potatoes. Now, if you saw the Hawaii episode, then you've seen vodka made with pineapple. Why pineapple? Actually, the pineapple is superior to greens. It's cleaner. So what does Tad think of that? I'm not even going to go into other vodkas, which in my opinion should not be called vodka, which is alcohol made out of grapes, alcohol made out of sugar cane, pineapples, or whatever else you can find. Okay, we'll play by his rules and stick to grains and potatoes. First up, the rye vodka. Rye is a very popular grain in Poland. It grows here because it has a very high starch content. It survives the winter, which are pretty harsh, mm -hmm. and very traditional product for making vodka. Because this sample is only distilled once, you can really detect the grainy, bread-like flavor. As for the next one... Okay, so that's barley. The barley base smells more like alcohol, and it has more of a neutral flavor profile. So how does it compare to the next one? Oats grows here in Poland as well. I can definitely taste the oats, but it's a little more mild than the rye. Okay, so far we have three grains. Yeah. You probably agree that they are completely different. They are. There's just, the smell is different, the taste is different. Mm -hmm. Now, the potato. Hmm. I, can, I can definitely smell the potatoes. I can also taste the potatoes, much like I could taste the rye in the first oh. one. So yes, Tad's proposition that the core ingredients affect the outcome is confirmed. So on to phase two of Tad's crash course on vodka, the importance of distillation. So we compare the once distilled potato vodka to the commercially available Chopin vodka, which is distilled four times. Yeah, The just, creaminess is still there. The creaminess is still there, and there's still potato taste and smell, but it's not that sort of earthy. Right, right. Tad right. points out that if he could distill it more, it would lose more of its character. That's why he believes counting more distillations as better is a mistake. It's purely marketing because I guess over the years uh, we were told that vodka is supposed to be odorless and tasteless. Right. It's not I, true. Yeah. People in Eastern Europe especially know it's not true. The one thing that is true is that this potato vodka is getting me in the mood for a Polish wedding. Thank you. Pat. Thank you. I learned you. more about vodka than I ever anticipated, which is wonderful. On my way to the wedding, an old tavern catches my eye. It's called Stara Karchma, which means, uh, old tavern. And it looks like the perfect place to get a taste of backcountry drinking in Poland. What's this? <laughs> Good Polish vodka. Some people are inside with a locally made plum vodka. That's 190 proof. I know. Tad, the Polish vodka big shot, wouldn't consider it vodka, it's made from plums. But in Poland, it's very common among, well, common folk to make potent distillates from plums and call it plum vodka. Okay, so I have a surprise for you. His surprise is a drinking game, where you roll the dice. Come on, big sixes. Move your shot glass around the map. And where you land gives you certain tasks. For this one, I'm supposed to be able to hold the log in front of me for longer than this guy can. One, two, three, four. Nice, okay. Five. Can I do it? Go. Go. Three, four, five, six. Oh my god. Uh, you win. Bravo! Wow. Yup, I skate by with a victory, and he's got a drink. But this game is crazy. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Pretty soon, I'm driving a spike into a stump. Hey! Hey! Now you can! Bravo, Dan! Sawing a log. And of course, taking shots. Ew! We win. I'm done. Game over. Yeah. Now that I've survived this crazy drinking game. I gotta get to that wedding before I lose a limb. But this guy won't let me leave until I try one of his favorite concoctions called <laughs> a shocker. A mug full of hot water and vodka. A bottle of pepper infused water and just a dash more pepper. And I think you're the best. Oh my God. Now I'm gonna be good. You hear those bells? That's the wedding that I have to go to. All right, one sip out of respect. Oh, okay. Then I give my new friend the honor. <laughs> wow. Hi. And on that note, I'm out of here. Wow. Coming up. Look at this. Look at this. This is a guy. This is like the Easter Bunny, but instead of eggs, he brings bottles of vodka. Right now, I'm in the small town of Koniakuk, Poland, where I've been invited to a wedding reception. That's the bride, Monica, and the groom, Thomas. After tying the knot, it's tradition here for the new couple to share some salted bread to symbolize an abundant life. Inside the reception hall, they kick off the festivities by downing some champagne. I'm hanging out with Arthur, cousin of the groom. And I'm guessing you remember him from the bachelor party. Apparently, he cuts it up old school. which soon morphs into new school. Which soon morphs into strange drinking contortions. I got a party with this dude. What'd you do at your wedding? Someone said to me, you going to a Polish wedding? They drink more at Polish weddings than any other occasion throughout the year. That's true. That's true. He tells me it's Polish tradition to eat snacks with your drinks. I don't know how it's in English. Umfka. Umfka? Uh huh. And you drink? Yeah. And after that, you eat umfka. Okay. Or you eat the. Uh, how is it? Kapushki. Kapushki? Yeah. That's English, kapushki? Well, I mean, it's <laughs> slang. I got a slang is slang, and I want to understand yeah. it. And you eat kapushki. Yeah. All right, enough screwing around. Let's get a drink. Look at this. Look at this. This is a guy. This is like the Easter Bunny, but instead of eggs, he brings bottles of vodka. By the way, that guy handing out the drinks isn't a waiter. He's in the wedding party. He walks around and feeds people vodka all night long. And he's obligated to take any shots offered to him. I want to see you in about an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Polish traditions, and we need do you know it. how to open it? Show me. Here you open it up. What? Why? What are you doing? What happened? Who did that? This is awfully familiar. In Costa Rica, they open guaro like that. In Jamaica, they open rum like that. And in Tanzania, they open kanyagi like that. Why did I do that? That's the way it's open. But no one's ever given me a good explanation for why. 
I don't know why. <laughs> Man, you must do it. Ask them. Find out why you do that. Ask them. Wait, what's your tagro be? Ah. When you do like that, yeah. you open it uh, easy. Easy. That's easy. it? Easy. Yes. That's drawy. That's drawy. The wedding follows a loose pattern that involves a round of food and vodka, then dancing. Then back to the tables for more food and vodka. <laughs> it's a blast. Check this out. Dashing for dance partners. <laughs> this game is easy, man. If you get left like high and dry, you have to sweep the floor. The bride and groom make their rounds paying respects to various guests, which in my case involves a giant beer with a shot of vodka in it. You drink it now, Dutch. Na zdrowie. Cheers. She said if I drink it, I'll be dead. She said that. Did you say that? Yeah, I, drink it, I'll be I dead? said that. I like that kind. I like it. It's good, man. After all this revelry and a long, long day of vodka, I'm afraid that the bride might be right. She said if I drink it, I'll be dead. I'll be dead. I'll be dead. You're only at a Polish wedding once in your life. Unless you go to two, and then you're there twice. <laughs> My favorite hangover cures involve the water. I like swimming in the water, like diving in the water. It seems to get rid of my hangover. In this case, my hotel has a water park built into it. So I'm gonna go swimming with my good buddy, Eric the Sound Guy, and we're gonna go and have some fun, okay? I actually got you a matching suit. There you go, buddy. How I do adore a good frolic in a Polish water park. And fun though it may be, it by no means overshadows my Polish drinking experience. Whether it tastes like honey, it's like a scotch, but it just has a, just a hint of sweetness to it. Tastes illegal, or makes a pyrotechnic show, Wherever you go, you can count on one thing. What'd you do at your wedding? The drinks will be flowing like water. Oh. Am I the winner? No. Why not? Look, I'm the only person here. <laughs> no yeah, dude. <laughs> More trains, more trains. I, I, I gym the cops in Poland. <laughs> I call this the rodeo. I like to do it at weddings. <laughs>